will review how antiphospholipid antibodies can be used to stratify patients with traditional manifestations like vascular and obstetric manifestations of antiphospholipid syndrome and also some non-criterion manifestations. First, let's start with the use of antiphospholipid antibodies that are part of the current classification criteria for stratification of patients with thrombosis and adverse pregnancy outcomes. The first point I want to mention is likely very well known by this crowd. And that is that being triple positive, meaning having positive anticardiolipin antibodies, lupus anticoagulant and beta-2 glycoprotein that are persistently positive is associated with thrombosis both in recurrence, but also both in recurrence in those who had already a thrombotic event, but also in those uh, who have never had a thrombotic event. And this graph shows a, a classic study from, from Dr. Pengo from Italy. And in this study, he recruited 104 triple positive patients who had no antiphospholipid syndrome clinical symptoms. And I guess you're wondering why these patients were tested for antiphospholipid antibodies to begin with. Well, the majority of them were tested due to uh, prolonged APTT. Uh, the second largest group were testing because they had an autoimmune disease like lupus, and a few more were tested due to a family history of thrombosis or, or because they had migraines. And the interesting thing is that in these patients who only have serologic markers, um, uh, well, when they were followed up, it was found that they had a, a rate of first VT of 5.3%. At five years, the patients, 30% of the patients had had a VT, and 40% had had a VT by 10 years. Again, this was observed in patients who had positive antibodies, but no previous thrombotic events. In other words, they were carriers of antiphospholipid antibodies. Now, what is the importance of having an isolated lupus anticoagulant? Well, this is a, this has been controversial and there have been a, a studies that have, have found that it's associated with thrombosis and pregnancy, uh, adverse pregnancy outcomes and others that a, by itself and others that is only associated in the context of having a positive anticardiolipin antibody or a positive anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibody. And uh, although this has been controversial, there was a recent study from, from Austria that showed that in, a, in the population, having a positive lupus anticoagulant is associated with death. And well, thrombosis is important, death is a more important outcome. And in this study, they found that those patients that, while well, they were falling over time, that, were, that had a positive lupus anticoagulant at five years had a 95% survival, this compared to the normative data from Austria. And at 10 years, they had an 87% survival. Again, this is compared to the normative data from Austria. Now. I, I have to say this because I'm a rheumatologist and in lupus specifically, having a positive lupus anticoagulant has been the main autoantibody that has been consistently associated with thrombosis. And also a, a reminder that although it, the association with thrombosis in, in primary APS has been controversial in the EULAR APS guidelines, this, having an isolated lupus anticoagulant was considered to be part of the high risk profile. Now let's talk about IgM versus IgG antibodies. In general, IgG isotypes have been associated with thrombosis and obstetric morbidity more than IgM isotypes. And I'm presenting this study from Europe that I like because one, it was multicentric and both, and, and second, they tested for the four solid phase assays that are more frequently used throughout the world. And the data that I'm presenting here is from the assay that we use at, uh, here at uh, Mayo Clinic. Um, 
In, in this cross-sectional study, they included more than 1,000 patients and 250 of them had APS uh, with thrombosis and around 120 had obstetric APS. And they tested them for lupus anticoagulant and beta-2 glycoprotein or anticardiolipin, both IgG and IgM. And what they found is in, in the case of thrombosis that was that lupus anticoagulant is associated that the IgG isotypes were associated with thrombosis, but not the IgM uh, isotypes. However, when there was a combination of the autoantibodies, these seemed to have a higher odds ratio than when they were found isolated by themselves, including IgM. For example, uh, when IgM was combined with IgG, the odds ratio was higher than IgG by itself. In the, on the other hand, in the same study, they found that IgM was associated with obstetric morbidity. And also similarly to the thrombosis observations, the more autoantibodies that the patients had, they were more likely to have a higher odds ratio. Now, I just want to bring to, you, to your attention the PROMISE study that was a landmark study from, from 10 years ago. This study was a prospective study, and they only found that lupus anticoagulant was the only antibody associated with, with adverse pregnancy outcomes. So to wrap up the first part of the talk, the triple, positive has, triple positivity has been associated with both first and recurrent thrombotic events. The relevance of isolated lupus anticoagulant in thrombosis is controversial, except in SLE, when we know that lupus anticoagulant is the main marker for thrombosis. And also in the PROMISE study, it was shown that a lupus anticoagulant was the main driver of adverse pregnancy outcomes. In general, IgG isotypes are more associated with thrombosis and maybe more associated with obstetric morbidity than IgM. So we have heard for several years that there's a, the new IPS criteria coming up and then other criteria and other disease manifestations will be included like the thrombocytopenia or valve disease. So now I'm going to talk about criteria antibodies for a stratification of non-criteria manifestations. And the first that I will discuss is, a, this is, a, systematic review and meta-analysis looking at antiphospholipid antibody profiles and thrombocytopenia. This is a very well done systematic review that was published in 2019. And they, they didn't include patients with primary APS. They only focused on SLE patients. And the reason for this is that it clearly allowed them to identify patients that were exposed to antiphospholipid antibodies and those who were not. And this study synthesized 53 previously published manuscript. And thrombocytopenia was found to be associated with lupus anticoagulant, mainly with lupus anticoagulant, but also with IgM anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1. It was not associated with IgG anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1. And uh, what this study showed is that IgM isotypes seem to be more associated with thrombocytopenia than IgG isotypes. Now the same group, but the, more recently, just a few months, published a similar systematic review, this time looking at he hemolytic anemia in SLE. And in this, in this study, they synthesized 38 previously published manuscripts. And similarly, they found that the antiphospholipid antibody that was more associated with, with hemolytic anemia was lupus anticoagulant. And the second one was anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 IgM. The, there were other associations as well, but again, the IgM isotypes seem to be more associated. So these two important systematic reviews show that, that it, at least in SLE, IgM isotypes are associated with increased risk of hematologic manifestations. Now, Dr. Suli has done several systematic reviews, and this one was looking at 
antiphospholipid antibodies and heart valve disease in SLE. Um, in this study, they used the same methodology. They focused in patients with lupus. And they found that lupus anticoagulant was six times more likely to be present in patients who had heart valve disease than those who did not have lupus anticoagulant. Also, they found that IgG isotypes for anticardiolipin were associated with, the, with heart valve disease, but not IgM isotypes. This study is from 2012, and at that time, there were not enough studies to do, uh, give a conclusion about the association with anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. However, after the last ICAPA Congress, there was this publication from, from my institution. And in this study, they risk stratify patients with APS who had at least one echocardiogram. They included around 400 patients. And in these 400 patients, around 60 had a non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. So had a valve disease that is associated with antiphospholipid syndrome. And they found similarly to Dr. Uh, Sully's observation that lupus anticoagulant and IgG isotypes were associated with heart valve disease, but not IgM isotypes. And they also observed that patients who had more antiphospholipid antibodies were more likely to have valve disease. So those who were single positive were, had a prevalence of NBTE of just 5% while those who were double positive had a non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis of 20%, and those who were triple positive had an MNVT prevalence of 30%. So in summary of this section, lupus anticoagulant and IgM isotypes are more associated with hematologic manifestations at IgG isotypes, at least in SLE. Lupus anticoagulant and IgG isotypes are associated with cardiac valve disease. This is both in SLE and primary APS, but not IgM isotypes. And the number of antiphospholipid antibodies correlates with the presence of cardiac valve disease in APS. So let's talk now, now about non-criteria antibodies for for non-criteria antibodies for stratification. So the first one that I will talk about is the IgA isotypes. And the IgA isotypes are in generally rarely found in isolation. They are usually found with, in the presence of IgG or IgM isotypes. And in general, most of the studies have not been, have not find association with IgJ isotype in isolation with thrombosis or pregnancy loss. However, in, and this is in, in primary APS. However, in, in lupus, I, IgA isotypes, particularly IgA beta-2 glycoprotein, has been associated with thrombosis. And it seems to have an additive effect to having a positive lupus anticoagulant. And also, I want to remind you that IgA isotypes, although not included in the current APS classification criteria, they are part of the SLIC and the eular acr lupus classification criteria. Now, I'll, I'll talk briefly ab about anti-domain 1 uh, beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. Uh, so uh, as you recall, the beta-2 glycoprotein 1 antibodies directed against domain 1 are thought to be pathogenic compared to those that are directed to the domain 4 and 5. And by that, I mean that domain one antibodies are associated with thrombosis or with pregnancy outcomes, but not those directed against domain four and five. And these, as will be expected, are frequently associated with patients who are triple positive. However, in studies that have either replaced the traditional anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies for the anti-domain one, or who have added the anti-domain one to the triple to the, to the classic antiphospholipid antibodies have failed to show that this addition improved the, the risk stratification. So their, their role is currently unclear. However, in, they may be helpful and may have currently a role 
in trying to identify if those patients who are single positive, for example, patients who only have a positive anti-beta-2 glycoprotein, um, ha have a higher risk of thrombosis or not, since if you, if you repeat this test after you did an anti-beta-2 glycoprotein and you identify that is the antibody that you're identifying is uh, against the main one, is more likely that this is associated with thrombosis. So the role is still uh, pending to be defined. Lastly, I will talk about antiphosphatidylserine and prothrombin antibodies. And these studies, these antibodies have been studied for the last decade or so, or even longer. And uh, they have been associated with arterial and venous thrombosis. And uh, this association uh, even resulted in their addition to the score designed by our colleagues from Europe. And I'm sure another talk will discuss the uh, GAPS score. Also, another interesting observation is that the P PSPT antibodies are strongly correlated with lupus anticoagulant. And uh, Dr. Bengo, even in one of his reports, found that all the patients that he tested for lupus anticoagulant were also positive for PSPT antibodies. But in other studies, this has not been the case. And some patients that are positive for lupus anticoagulant were not positive for PSPT. And this strong co correlation be between them might be helpful in the setting of patients who are anticoagulated and the reliability of lupus anticoagulant is low. For example, if you have a patient that is anticoagulated, and is lupus, is lupus anticoagulant positive, but you're not certain of the positivity. If this patient is positive for PSPT, you have more certainty that the lupus anticoagulant that you're observing is truly real and not an artifact from the anticoagulation. However, if the PSPT is negative, you cannot rule out a positive lupus anticoagulant. So in conclusions, the antiphospholipid antibody profile helps to characterize risk. I decided to do a visual conclusion that you can take a picture of. It summarizes all everything that I mentioned. And also if you're watching virtually, you can just snip it and, and keep it in your, in your files. So just to summarize, triple positive antiphospholipid antibodies is clearly associated with thrombosis and heart valve disease. The association with obstetric outcomes is in, in, in the case of obstetric outcomes, it's not clear if it has a, carries an additional risk to having a lupus anticoagulant po positive. And this is the same in the case of lupus. Now we know that lupus anticoagulant is also associated with heart valve disease and hem with hematologic manifestations, at least in SLE. IgG isotypes are associated with thrombosis and they are associated with heart disease uh, heart valve disease and hematologic manifestations, at least in SLE. And IgM isotypes are more associated with hematologic manifestations. I thank you very much for your attention and enjoy your time in Argentina.